introduce him. Um, gonna be a little bit low, so you might have to stretch a little bit this morning to see him, but I'm sure that you will hear him. What is your subject this morning? Christian Privilege Present. We'll continue to see her. Christian Privilege Present. Brother Bruce. Well, good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I see we couldn't wait to get started on our present Christian privileges and the devotions, the fact that God hears our whispers. is certainly a privilege that we uh, should appreciate. Um, before we get started, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank you all for your, your prayers and cards and uh, eagerness to help the Blake out yet another month. <laughs> but your prayers have been answered, assuming you wanted a good outcome. Uh, <laughs> I may be taking that for granted, but uh, my, by American standards, we were put off a, quite a while to actually have the operation, but it all went well. Um, they did find a little more damage than they anticipated and had to do a little more work, so I'll be the full six weeks before I can put any weight on my on my leg, but uh, you know, certainly by the time you get in your 70s, six weeks goes by awful fast. <laughs> by the Tuesday night study, I'll be a third of the way through, and by next, the next Sunday that I'm before you, in December, I should have pants on. <laughs> I should be standing behind, I should be able to stand behind me. Uh, uh, I have shorts on, by the way. <laughs> uh, but I should be able to stand behind the, uh, the podium, or at least sit on a stool and, and serve in a manner that's uh, more comfortable. But seriously, thank you all for your, for your help and your, your concerns. The last time we um, got together, we, we considered Christian privilege past. We're going to look at Christian privileges from three standpoints, past, present, and future. We tried to establish that our current privileges have a long past, and in fact, were preordained by God before the world began. We made a mini defense of the Bible, not being just another book of great teachings and suggestions, but of what it actually is, the Word of God. No way, no way will we ever know, let alone live, our full Christian privileges until we know what this is. You know, Apostle Paul lived and taught daily for about three years each in Corinth and Ephesus. But he spent only about a month, maybe even less, in Thessalonica. And yet Paul himself writes, For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out so that we don't need to say anything. Wow, what accommodation, huh? Well, Paul had to say a lot to the others, especially those at Corinth. Do you suppose that Paul was a different or a much better teacher when he was in Thessalonica? Were the Thessalonians just that much 
smarter than the others? I would suggest that 1 Thessalonians 2.13 may be the biggest reason for the difference. There Paul says, <clears throat> For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God which also effectively works in you who believe. When young ones first come to the Lord and start reading the Bible, let me speak for myself. I, I should not report this on all of you. But you end up a lot of time measuring things. And a lot of Christians still today are measuring, gee, could this be true? Could that be true? You're not grasping the fact who wrote this. Okay. God is always true. And God means what he says and says what he means. And to live and do the things that God desires us to do, you've got to have the grasp that this is God talking to you. In this book, it doesn't seem right just to call it a book. <laughs> All right. In this precious word, there are principles of life and living found that if followed, they will advance your life and time on this globe, whether you believe that this is the word of God or not because they are eternal principles. But you will never know nor live your full Christian privilege until you know for certain that this is the Word of God. Written and preserved as a love letter of instruction and encouragement to you that you might know how to live. When I talk about present Christian privileges, I'm talking about today what and how we live today, what we can do, and where we find the power to do it. In my mind, there can be only one starting point in the consideration of our present privileges as Christians. It is the single thing that separates us from all of mankind as the enemies of God of which we have all belonged. We are all sinners. Some of us gross sinners, much more culpable than the average man and enemy of God on the street today. Our only difference is that our sins have been forgiven. In Romans 4, Apostle Paul quotes from Psalm 32, 1 and 2. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. That is us. That which separates us from all the rest of God's enemies. And why is it that our transgressions are forgiven and everybody else's are not? Can it be that we are much cuter than those others? Are we so much smarter than everybody else? Or is it just that we're just so much holier than thou? What great things did we accomplish to earn God's forgiveness and be transferred from the enemies of God, not to friends of God, but to the children of God? What did we do? Did we slay dragons? 
convert continents at the point of the sword into Christianity? Did we lay our heads on the chopping block for Christ? Did we give all our wealth to the poor? If we did these things, we still have yet to make a down payment on the debt we owe for our sins committed and the sinful nature which we have by inheritance from Adam. Man cannot save himself or anyone else. I always chuckle when I hear people ask, how many have you saved? I don't have to add very many. It doesn't take me long to add it up. I saved no one. 